San Francisco, make some noise. Awesome. We are so excited to be here. Welcome to Mortified at the JCC. Uh, make some noise if you've seen Mortified before. This is good. It's nice. our, it's our nice. bar mitzvah. It is Mortified's bar mitzvah. Mortified is 13 years old in the Bay Area. Today-ish. <laughs> so let's make this more awkward. Um, we are the Freeze. We are your house band for the evening. We're going to make up songs throughout the night. And because this is Mortified at the JCC, we got a little something special for you. Diary, dear diary, oh no, the horror. I finally got my period while studying the Torah. Gather round the table. We'll all have a treat. We hope you like true stories about puberty. Cause they're gonna read them. And we will then make up some songs. They'll be mortifying and we'll be improvising. Cause tonight mortified is finally a man. Or maybe mortifies a woman. It doesn't matter cause gender's fluid. One thing's for sure tonight, we're all Jewish. Tonight we're going to party all night long. Yes, tonight we're gonna party all night long. Oh, tonight we're gonna party all night long. Well, tonight we're gonna party all night long. Give it up, oh, we go, go. Tonight we're gonna party and jump for joy, all you Hebrews, Gentiles, and goys. Girls and boys, I say oy vey. This is mortified, we're going back in the day. Back to cassette tapes and MTV. We bring that here to the JCC. Woo! So you get the picture. This is mortified bar mitzvah. Uh, Finally becoming a man with a few speed bumps didn't go according to plan. Like for me, I was just a little kid thinking I was so cute, but I became hideous and had braces, zits on my faces and strange sensations in scary new places. I didn't know what to do. I just had my diary that I wrote into. And then the five readers that you're about to see are gonna hop up on a S-T-A-G-E and read all the pain from their teenage days. And we're gonna laugh and it's gonna be great. And it is very therapeutic. Trust me, everybody, it is gonna be the truest shit you ever heard. So let me finish this long intro. Yo, we'll party all night long. And we're gonna party all night long. Give it up for OP. Tonight we're gonna party all night long. And by all night long, we mean until nine. Like 9.15. Because we're old now, and that's our bed time. Welcome Ooh, to Mortify, JC. Welcome to Mortify. Hello, JCC, how are you doing? Good to see you guys. Uh, so we've been, I've been wanting to do Mortified at the JCC forever, and uh, Mortified has been in the Bay for 13 years. 13 years, and so we contacted them and said, what if it, it's, it's a man or woman now, or, or whatever it is, and so what do we do, an adult, let's do a bar mitzvah show here. So that is the show, this is not a bar mitzvah, there will be no crappy DJ, no celebration being played, no candles blown, but we are gonna hear some very strange diary entries. Are there people that have not seen Mortified before? And if not, that's okay, there's no judgment, that's fine, you're in a safe place. Uh, here's what Mortified is, in a nutshell. Uh, we've been doing this for 13 years in the Bay. Uh, adults get on stage and they read from their actual teen diaries, uh, sometimes poems, letters, songs, all these things written before the age of 19 that they did not know they would share at a JCC years later in front of 300 of their closest, newest friends. So that is what is happening tonight. This stuff is very real. 
uh, we, we meet people, we sift through their diaries, and the stuff that's normal and boring and talking about eating macaroni and cheese does not make it on stage. But the really strange, weird stuff makes it on stage. And that's what you're going to be hearing. Again, this stuff was not meant to be heard by you, so just know ahead of time, it is, it's embarrassing, it's naive, and oftenly sexually graphic. So all these things are going to be happening today. Uh, before we get into any of that, I wanted to thank uh, the SFJCC for having us. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Also wanted to thank the media sponsor, KLAKALW 91.7 FM for having us. Thank you. Uh, if you guys want to hear a lot of the shows uh, from the JCC, they have uh, uh, Bina's Creative Voices for the Arts and Ideas series, and that's every Thursday at noon, and so you can hear all the stuff at the JCC, most of the stuff. Uh, that being said, we're about to get in the show. Before we do so, I would, it would be a, a, a disservice if, it not, if I did not introduce you to the band to my right, known to the world as The Freeze. Yes. You've already seen a sampling of what they can do. Besides being very talented, very attractive individuals, they are going to be making up songs improvisationally today. It's a lot of syllables, so I'm going to break this down. They're going to make up songs on the spot. Whatever impresses them about a mortified performer or reader, they will do a song, a dance, a hip-hop routine, whatever, it, whatever crosses their mind, they are going to perform live on stage for your pleasure. Uh, it's, they're kind of like the Beatles, except uh, they have people of color and a woman, and songs are improvisational. And they're not British. Besides that, exactly the same. So that is going to be happening in between the performers. So again, we got the weird... Boner stories, the menstruation stories, we got the improvisational songs. We're in the JCC. It's amazing. It's going to be a great night. It's the best bar mitzvah we've ever been to. <laughs> Better than mine, for sure. And uh, to start the show, uh, I've been producing the show here for the 13 years, uh, but I started before producing it as a performer. So I'll be reading from my own journal tonight. You're welcome, folks. This is happening. So... In honor of our bar mitzvah show, that's, that's the bar mitzvah photo. That's real. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Oh, you like that? Yeah. The part, the hair part in the middle? It's a good, it's a good look. Okay, so uh, set the stage for you. Um, uh, so this is written from when I was 16. Uh, my friends were starting to uh, get action. Uh, they're starting to get girlfriends and stuff, and I was not. Um, so I had a crush on, uh, unfortunately, on the most popular girl in the grade. Uh, she was, you know, dating a college guy, and I had no chance of getting her whatsoever. Um, so what ended up happening was I ended up uh, finally getting a girlfriend, going for the first girl that showed me any attention whatsoever. Uh, and I think when that happens, you're willing to overlook certain things, like having absolutely no attraction and nothing in common. <laughs> and so that's you know, what this is going to go through. You know, again, you know, remember 16, uh, raging hormones, no girls even talk to me, and this is like a female, and she's talking and laughing, and it, it's working, and so uh, just understand as this goes through. This is, this is going to chronicle our, our two-and-a-half-month relationship, uh, <laughs> which in high school terms is very long, uh, but you'll see that the tone, you know, changes. Again, no girl, any attention. So at first, I'm like a giddy high school girl, and then I quickly turn into an asshole prick bastard. Okay. Uh, Monday, 9-10-1991. During study hall, me and Missy talked throughout the whole period. We're really good friends now. Good. Uh, Sunday, 9-18-91. Uh, Yom Kippur. Well, I didn't eat until after five. I think it's a record. Me and Missy talked on the phone for an hour. Missy called at nine and we talked till 10. We both love Greece too and we're scheduled to see it next Saturday. <laughs> it's weird, I wanna spend every second with her, but I don't wanna have sex with her or see her naked. <laughs> and if you're a 16 year old with raging hormones, that's like a red flag right there. <laughs> Monday, 10, 2091. Oh boy, these are confusing times. I'm so mixed about Missy. I think of her all the time. I don't think she goes out though. I mean, she's never been at the mall or at the movies. Wednesday, 10, 21, 91. Oh God, Missy is really, I think about her 90% of the time. 
things are pretty intense. She talked about me and her going on cruises till we're 70. <laughs> She's coming over Friday, I have to clean up. Friday, 102591, important day in history. Yes, it's true, I asked Missy out and she said yes. Well, let's recap. She came home with me on the bus, we walked the dog and wrestled and stuff. <laughs> My mom came home and made us English muffin pizzas as we watched Heathers. In 1991, that is the most like perfect date you can have. Both of us were lying on one couch hugging. I feel kind of sick. Maybe it's love. Saturday, 10-26-91. Ah, married life. This is... That is one day later, folks. <laughs> just, I told you. I went to Missy's and I brought Grease 2, The Outsiders, and Chicken Littles. We had fun and I tried to kiss her once. It didn't work. I don't know if I kissed her on her cheek or her nose. It was kind of embarrassing, but I just laughed and said I slipped. I can't believe we haven't kissed yet. It's so nice, though, lying down, having her on top of me. Sunday, 10 27 91. Second day anniversary. <laughs> Before, I was thinking that I didn't want to be going out with Missy. Responsibilities and crap, you know? But I know now that I definitely am glad. Thursday, 10 31 91. Halloween. We still haven't fucking kissed yet. There were three times when I felt she was going to, or I would, but didn't. If we don't kiss soon, it'll be a big deal. Saturday, 11 91 important day in history. I French kissed Missy! Yes! Thank you, thank you. No, that's... <laughs> Finally, we watched Nightmare on Elm Street and Saturday Night Live. She hurt her nose and I went to kiss it, and then after that, I Frenched her. It was only for like seven or eight seconds. Our teeth kept crashing. Well. Sunday, 11-3. I feel bad for ignoring Todd last night, but I was horny, so passionate. Missy and I both were. We couldn't separate from each other. Our kisses are so wet though, it's starting to piss both of us off. Our faces were hurting today, probably from dried saliva. Thursday, 11 7 Oh, I love Missy. I mean, there are certain things which I hate about her. Her refusal to see Star Wars, Batman, and other cool movies. Her hatred for cheese. Right? <laughs> but I just love her. Sometimes I'm with her and I just want to squeeze her and kiss her hard. It just felt really good to just Lie on top of her. Friday, 11 8 91. Oh my God. I just made a green shit. I've never made a green shit before. Monday, 11 8 91. I thought I'd go a day without seeing Missy, but I was wrong. We watched Coming to America. We kissed, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we kissed quite a few times, and I think I'm really good at it now. I've been thinking though, do I wanna go out with this girl for the rest of my high school career? <laughs> she has no interest in sex or drinking, and please know I had not done either of those things at that time. Uh, I mean, we have a lot in common, and there's a lot we don't have in common. Why be linked to only one commonality? I can't break up with her. I'm really glad I'm going out with her. I'm only 16, chill. <laughs> Saturday, 11, 9, 91. I bought the Robin Hood videotape today. That's the Kevin Costner one. That's an awful film. 
I went to Missy's. We kiss a little more often. We kissed once very hard for like a minute or two. I feel like I'm getting worse at kissing. <laughs> Maybe the rhythm's off. She opens her mouth too wide, that's what the problem is. I guess it's not really time to go up her shirt or down her pants or anything. Again, I hadn't done either of those things, obviously. And again, not for a while. <laughs> Thursday, 11, 14, 91. Hey, I'm worried. I owe so much to so many tape clubs. I, so it's, I mean, we're doing this shit, like I said, we're doing the show for 13 years. I've been finding in the past two years that I need to break down that statement to younger people that may not understand what that means. So I'll just break it down really quick. If uh, in the 80s or 90s you wanted to build up your uh, cassette tape or CD collection, and you're a poor young person, you would join Columbia House or, or RCA uh, record tape company, and they had ads in magazines where you tape a penny to an ad, you send it in, they send you like eight or 12 CDs or tapes, you're supposed to buy more in the next few years that are at inflated prices, but you didn't do it because you were young, and they couldn't do anything against you because you were a minor. And that's how we built up your collection <laughs> in the 80s or 90s. And then you would start joining under fake names also and make that even, it was great. You can't do it anymore, but we get free music that we download, so that's pointless anyway. <laughs> Wednesday, 11 16, 91. I just got off the phone with Missy, and I'm kind of troubled. We just had our first fight. She was watching the news, and some twin babies died. She just told me to watch it, to hold on while she watched it, and she told me that she's so depressed now. I was like, so? Do you know how many babies die a day? Do you know what else happens in the world? And then I asked her if she felt sorry for all the guys that died in Nam. <laughs> I told you guys about the asshole prick bastard part, right? She was like, you're so insensitive. And I mean, I guess I was kidding, but I said, uh, how can you kid about death? Oh, she said, how can you kid about death? I don't know about her, but I don't take death very seriously, and I don't think anyone should. After all, if she can't take a joke, I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I'm worrying about the relationship. I could never break up with her. Still, I can't believe she was mad at me. She's one of those people who's really hooked on babies, and I'm not. All I said was that the parents should have gotten upset because they didn't know the baby too long. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I warned you guys. Uh, and just, you know, let you guys know, uh, again, I started reading this 13 years ago. Uh, I've had children since then. Uh, and after you read that, after having a child, you feel like a huge asshole. So that's what's happening for me, and I'm sharing that with you, and this is our catharsis. And now I'm gonna continue reading, thank you. Uh, <laughs> The parents should have gotten upset because they didn't know the baby too long. It would have been worse had it been a 16-year-old. I'm probably overdoing it. I'm too sensitive. That's my problem. Oh, well, gots to go. <laughs> Thursday, 11, 17, 91. Missy's dog wrecked things in the house. Missy freaked out. She gets angry, and she just can't get rid of the anger. I think she needs a psychiatrist. <laughs> well, I mean, everyone does. Stephen sure does. Ed, too. Especially David. Everyone but me. <laughs> Monday, 11, 18, 91. I'm pissed now, not pissed, but confused. Every time I'm not with Missy, I think about the problems in our relationship. Why go steady with someone in high school unless you're gonna get married to them? <laughs> right? I, I don't know where that came from. Uh, I like her, but I know that I don't wanna marry her and I feel trapped. <laughs> But how could I ever dump Missy? She would be crushed and she doesn't deserve it. I am so confused. Tuesday, 11, 19, I talked to Missy. I really have to rethink dumping her. I know this probably won't be a permanent relationship. I don't think we'll get married is what I mean because we have too many differences. Oh well, nature calls. Uh, and that's where these <laughs> series of diary entries end. Uh, but what followed, as you might imagine, uh, like two weeks later was the world's worst breakup. It was my first breakup, right? First girlfriend. So I didn't know how to break up or date, obviously. 
Uh, and so uh, the breakup was full of every cliche you could imagine. It was in her car, I was dropping her off. It was the, it's not you, it's me. And I just want to be friends and I need space. And she cried and, and it was awful. And I, and I kept having that pattern. I think in high school especially, there was like two and a half month relationships. Uh, and then, you know, like all of us, I had longer relationships, but it, there's always challenges. Uh, and so I will share this with you as, as my happy ending. Uh, and this is true, that this happened uh, recently. Uh, so I have a girlfriend and we were uh, hanging out watching TV. I think I had read this like a few nights prior. And I stop and I just kind of look around and I have this, this, this moment, this, this realization, this awareness. And we're sitting there, all right, and we're watching Star Wars <laughs> together. She is wearing a Batman t-shirt. And together, as we watch Star Wars, Batman t-shirt, we are eating cheese. <laughs> it all finally came together. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Look how handsome he is. Uh huh, uh huh. I mean, my God. Okay. Mmm, -hmm, all right. It's Scott and Missy. Yeah, you know the love is true. Mm. All they wanna do is hang out and watch motherfucking Grease 2. Grease 2. And Missy. Yeah, the love is legit. Mm. It's definitely positive they're gonna end up on a cruise ship. My name is Scott. I want a girlfriend, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, just someone to watch Heather's with on Yom Kippur. Important day in history. Guys, a green shit just came out of me. Got this girl named Missy. Uh, I don't know if I can take it. She's so fine, but I don't want to sex her or see her naked. But I do want a French. Yeah, you know how it goes. Uh, yeah, I want to clack them teeth and put my tongue up her nose. Mm, yeah, you like how I did that? Not really. You sure? Pretty sure. I'm getting better. Uh, don't know if you're ready. Let's go on cruises till we are 70. Girl, your love is so hurting me. I want to celebrate our second day anniversary. All right. Yes, yeah, Scott, it's me, Missy. I want to go to your house. Mm -hmm. I want to get real close to you, and I'm just going to open my mouth. Yeah. I'm going to open it so wide, and then I might cry. Mm -hmm. You might think that I have rabies. I'm just going to go watch those two dead babies. Oh, come on, what's wrong? I mean, the fucking parents didn't know the baby's too long. It's very upsetting. What about all the guys who died in Nam? Uh, guys, I'm too sensitive. That's what's going on. It's Scott uh -huh. and Missy. Yeah. yeah, you know the love is true. Mm -hmm. All they want to do is make out and watch motherfucking Grease too. And walk the dog and wrestle. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm pretty sure after two and a half months, they're definitely gonna wind up on a cruise ship. Got to go. Hi. I'm Amy. Um, first of all, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. Anyways, whatever more loser cheese ball, whatever loser loser, fly away, fly away. Anyway, save it for Oprah. What? Ever. I was, um, I was always a drama kid and always a theater kid and always a tad bit melodramatic. Um, super naive and I'm gonna be reading from my journal which I, and some letters that I wrote from age about 11 to 17. So. All right, sixth grade. I hate school. Yesterday, coming home on the bus was so bad. As you know, I am a nerd, nationally educated rad dude. <laughs> so I always have to sit in the front. Anyway, one of the popular boys, Gary, was crawling under the seats, and he thought that I got him in trouble. Gary's best friend, Mariah, said that tomorrow you have to give him $50 or a blowjob. I got home and I was so panicked. 
I counted all my babysitting money and I only have $23. Okay, blowjob. I don't even know where we're supposed to do it. Break into one of the classrooms? Don't we need an outlet? Right? So mom caught me this morning, even though I thought I was being really secretive, putting her blow dryer into my backpack. I didn't want to tell her, but then I said I had to give this guy a blow job, which was so dumb because I don't know how to blow dry hair anyway. And then she told me what a blow job was. That's disgusting. This is pre-internet, you know. All right, 1993. I guess I should tell you about my family. Sister, she loves horses above all else and her dream is to have one. I guess I should tell you that she used to believe in flying horses. She would stand in the backyard with a lasso just in case one flew over. Dad, he and I play music together. He's the smartest person I know, but we never really talk. He's a neurologist. I wish I knew him better. Oh, and I wish he'd wear deodorant, ugh. Mom, sometimes nice, great back rubber, can be a mega bitch, <laughs> and she smokes pot. I hate it when she does that. I guess I should tell you that back in sixth grade, I really pissed her off. It was kind of awesome. That day, we had a dare conference, and I learned that pot is really bad for you. <laughs> so I came home and searched through mom's closet and found her stash. Two big Ziploc bags. I took them out to the garage and burned them in one of the big pasta pots. There was a lot of smoke. <laughs> oh, man. I went and told her and she was so pissed. But whatever. Then dad was really mad when he came home and opened the garage because all this smoke came out and I guess it smelled really bad. And then I got grounded. My parents are so ignorant. <laughs> anyway, you need a name because I badly want someone I can talk to and share my innermost secrets to like a boyfriend. I'll name you George. You know what I found out today, George? Becky lost her virginity last weekend. I envy her, but I'm gonna save my virginity for the man I marry. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, that didn't happen. Um, but what I wouldn't give for a boyfriend, I guess you'll have to do, George. Did you know I've never even been on a date? Sure, I've liked lots of guys, but none of them have ever liked me. I know. <laughs> Dear my beloved George, sorry about the delay, but I've been busy. Got lots to tell you. First of all, you need a new name. Something more romantic. I'll call you Kevin Antony, with a hyphen. <laughs> I want love, pure, true, and sincere. I want a wonderful, caring, humorous, intelligent, loving, sincere, adventurous, romantic, charming, handsome, and rich husband. I crave love and romance. It's like a deep, undying hunger, deep within my heart that cannot be quenched. But for now, you'll have to do Kevin Antony. Dear Kevin Anthony, I am in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, and I am in love with the guy who plays Joseph, Mason Denota. Shh, wrote that in the diary. I suppose I know that it is a love that will never be, but when I am near him at rehearsal, my heart flutters. You cannot imagine how much I like him. In my mind, I imagine him asking me out, and then I say, there is nothing I want more. Every night, I pray that Mason will like me. He'll ask me out and then go out on a, for a few months and then fall deeply in love and have a wonderful relationship for a few years. <laughs> I bought a candle at the Psychic Eye where when you say the person's name three times and light it, he'll fall in love with you. It hasn't worked yet. <laughs> but there's still hope. 
but he'll never like me. Oh, you can't imagine the depth of my pain. Mason, oh, Mason, wherefore art thou my Mason? I would totally change my name for you. Kevin Antony, I hate to break it to you, but your name is now Mason. Mason, I love you. <clears throat> I tried out for West Side Story last night, and Lisa got Maria, and Mason got Tony. I want to die. <laughs> Can't I do anything right? God, hello, I'm here. Where are you? My family is trying to comfort me, but how can they? Nobody knows how much I wanted to sing those tender songs with Mason and to kiss him. I've been crying for the last hour and snot is hanging down my nose. My mother should have aborted me. I wish she had. God, I am seriously thinking about becoming an atheist. Death, take me now. <laughs> Slightly melodramatic. Oh. So, 1995, age 16. My life has changed. I have so much to say. I just got back from CISA, California Summer State School of the Arts. So um, I went to this amazing summer camp at CalArts with a bunch of like theater and film and music people. So it was all my people for a month. And I was like, wow. And I got crushes on lots of guys. And so I would write them these letters, but it was really time consuming to write different letters. So, um, <laughs> I kind of created a template <laughs> and it ranged in length from about eight to 10 pages. <laughs> I know. And I would write them on cloud paper and I would send them in a shoebox with a mixtape and dried roses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dead flowers in the mail. Didn't work out so well. So, um, so the letter would remain the same with a few changes to fit the person. Um, so here are some excerpts. <laughs> Dear blank. <laughs> you remind me of a mythological wood nymph. Carefree and cunning and enigmatic, skipping through the forest, capturing the hearts of those fortunate to know you. I will no longer bother you unless you respond. If not, I genuinely wish you the best of luck in all of your endeavors. And if you should ever need me, I will always be here. And then I would end the letter on some cliche Thoreau quote. And if anybody answered like with a postcard, I would jump. Right? And then like the letter writing would seriously continue and I had templates for that too. But um, here's, here's somewhat of an excerpt. My dearest Nate, by now you are probably quite annoyed at receiving these letters, but somehow you'll live. You may be wondering, why am I writing you? A few reasons this letter will address. A, you haven't called me. This could be due to numerous circumstances, like you were abducted by aliens, you were becoming addicted to heroin and died, you created your own harem, or you decided to watch a nonstop Audrey Hepburn marathon, and B, to remind you that if you should never need me, I shall don a suit of armor to come and rescue you. So, yeah. Uh, he and I talked on the phone a few times, and, uh, and then I really wanted to give him a gift of affection, but um, I couldn't see him in person because he lived in another city and he didn't invite me to come and visit him. <laughs> so I wrote him this letter. Uh, and I wrote it to more than one person. <laughs> My dearest Nate, I give you warmth and rainbows and dust and dewdrops and meadows covered in daisies and waterfalls and fairy tales and mud that squeezes between your toes and feels really neat and romance and soft rain and the magic of the stage and hot chocolate with marshmallows and goosebumps that come from really good music and old bright patch teddy bears and lollipops and dozens of bright colored helium balloons and hodgepodge and freckles and giggling and love. So, I know, right? I did um, become friends with one of the guys in college and he was like, do you have any idea how psychotic it was that you knew where I lived and you sent me dead flowers in the mail? I was like, but did you read the letter? He's like, no. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, in closing, I am currently single. So, <laughs> gentlemen, um, if any of you are interested in a template love letter and or a mixtape, uh, which I still have the template of, please come see me after the show. Thanks. It did. It was, a, it was love. It was an expression of love. It was too much expression. No, people just don't understand, you know, because I'm from Bernardino, and I'm like, I'm going to say, I'm ding ding, whatever. And I'm going to go in front of all these people, and it's going to be amazing. And they just don't understand me. And I was actually just scaling. I was scaling the quality. I was being efficient with my templates. And it's something that I brought into my life and as an adult, and I just don't understand why you don't get it. And I feel like... You know, I'm happy actually that the friend that I made later didn't read the letter. Because that would have been a bigger problem. Blue. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Mary Van Note. Uh, I'll be reading from my fifth to eighth grade diaries um, from when I was growing up in San Rafael. Uh, yeah, when I was 12, I was a tomboy uh, who really wanted to be a girl. Uh, <laughs> but didn't know how. Uh, I was also um, convinced that I was born to party. <laughs> This was around the time when um, boys go from ill to oh yeah. <laughs> but you know, naturally I was conflicted with my 11 year old feminist leanings. <laughs> but ultimately I just wanted someone to love and to build my reputation as the girl who knows how to party. <laughs> um, so let me just unlock November 30th, I hate boys. 
I hate them so much. They say all sports are for men. They get on my nerves because they think girls can't do anything. But I'll show them one day. Yes, I really will show them. I'll show them what boys can't do. <laughs> like sewing. <laughs> singing. <laughs> dancing. Cooking. And all that stuff that boys can't do. So we can show them what we girls really can't do. April 15th. I want to write a story on the Great Depression. But I don't know how. I don't have any information. And it's hard to understand. <laughs> I think I'm just going to write something about immigration. <laughs> or about bagpipes. <laughs> so this, this was a project um, in the fifth grade. We had to write where we would be in June 2014. <laughs> so, um, just to give you some context, I'm gonna read you what some of my classmates wrote, and then I'll read you mine. <laughs> Mickey Cohen spends most of his time traveling in his mobile home with his family of monkeys. <laughs> and his son. <laughs> He decided not to marry, but adopted a wonderful little boy who was in need of a loving home. John Lynch can be found bent over a test tube trying to find an antibody for AIDS. With his mind never at rest, he is constantly planning his expeditions to Mars, which he will pilot as soon as his antibody has been perfected. Mary Van Note can be found in an office that reads Mary Van Note. <laughs> Optometrist. <laughs> she suffered a great loss recently. <laughs> the death of her loving husband. <laughs> She has recovered from this loss <laughs> and is enjoying life with her super children, Jacob and Lisa. She's living in her grandparents' house, which has a lot of wonderful childhood memories. So, in my wildest dreams, I had two kids, which I'm like, what? <laughs> I have a five-month-old now, and I just can't, I'm one and done. Um, but yeah, also, I, I made myself a widow. That's crazy. <laughs> June 1st. Yesterday, I got my braces. I only have it on four teeth, on the front of my teeth. I guess I'll get used to it. This morning, it was really hard for me to get my contacts in, but with the help of the Lord, <laughs> I got them in. Thank you. August 12th. Sometimes I wish I'd know about life. Like, what's the point? I can't wait to grow up and have fun fiddling with makeup. I wish I was born to be wild. <laughs> October 12th, Dear Diary, guess what? I'm in junior high. I have a lot to say and I'll start with this. 
I'm mad because I'm not growing that fast. Not just about height, but about my breasts. It's taking a long time and it hurts. I know it'll take a while and I could wait, but I don't know. I've been daydreaming a lot lately, mostly about boys. They're still annoying and rude, but it would just feel good if there would be a boy you could talk to and know that there's someone loving you. July 16th, the day before yesterday, I got my period. It is so annoying. You can't even feel it coming out. It is really sick and sometimes thick. I feel like I'm wearing a diaper with these pads. Although, out of all of this, I'm kind of proud. <laughs> August 3rd, I have no idea of what and who I am. I just don't see why I get so depressed sometimes. Sometimes, I'm weird and crazy. Other times, I'm hardworking and serious. Here is a list of what I am. <laughs> Fun, outgoing, party animal. October 5th, dear diary, my party was the bomb. The only bad thing was that there were only five guys there and 23 <laughs> girls. <laughs> You know who I really love now? Henry. He is so sweet and cute. I hope we get together. We're friends now. It's great to have guy friends. You know, I've started the dance party trend. Now everybody is having one. Ha! I can't wait. Woo! <laughs> October 12th. Dear Die. Last night was Kelly's party. It was okay. Well, I'm such a partier that I have fun at any party. <laughs> but not that many people were into dancing and everybody was telling me that my party was better. Well, I danced with Henry at every slow song. And on one, I asked him out and he said, sure. I was so excited, my dreams came true. But at the next slow song, he said he thought it wouldn't work out. <laughs> I was really disappointed and very sad inside. That took a lot of guts. I am so ready for a relationship, I'll never get one. There are no other guys at my school. A lot of guys care too much about their reps. Whatever. <laughs> I'll try and keep this all behind me, although I feel so rejected. Bye! <laughs> okay. November 25th. We just got America Online. <laughs> it's fun. But my parents aren't going to renew it because they don't like me talking in chat rooms. <laughs> A few hours ago, I was having cyber sex. <laughs> it's fun. I won't do it again, though, because my family is getting suspicious since I'm on so much. I got most outgoing of our eighth grade class. I'm so flattered. I volunteer at the YMCA now. I hate it! Whatever!
Yeah, fuck the YMCA, right? <laughs> December 22nd. Life sucks. First, the two guys I loved don't like me and pretty much rejected me. And then my family all told me I was a snob. This is right before Christmas, too. Even on Friday, I was cutting myself with a plastic spoon <laughs> in the bathroom at school. I bit off some of it so it was sharp. And I cut myself. I wasn't bleeding or anything. Just scratches that were red. Thank you. It's morning. My eyes are dry. I've been dreaming of sensitive guy I don't know what to do as I look in the mirror one hand is my saline solution and the other hand is my contact with the help of the Lord with the help of the Lord I'll get my contacts in. I'll get my contacts in. I'll face the day. I'll face the day. Realize my destiny <laughs> as a party animal. Some days at school. seem to grow my breasts that fast and I wish other people would just know that I'm fun and spontaneous and a party animal with the hair Sure, sure, whatever. <sighs> then the next slow song came on, and he said, Look, Mary Van Note, I'm not sure. Not so sure. This will work out. other people think why because my dance parties my dance parties they are the talk of the town <laughs> and i know what you're saying yes my rapid is growing i'm a party animal with a hand on the
may we present the lead song from the soundtrack to Maniac 2. Ever since I was five, and my parents birthed me to be buried alive, I just looked at the skies and asked myself why. And then this one time, running around with my dog, Sunshine, she jumped up and bit me. And then something inside, it felt icky, but it looked poorly rehearsed. But honestly, guys, it was the worst Because I turned into a maniac for show I was throwing people out the motherfucking window And beating their heads on the patio For show And then the superhero was coming at me I'm like, don't come near, bro You look like Batman or the Knights Templar I'm not really sure exactly what you are uh, But I'm gonna hide and put a mask on Yes, a mummy face, that will be a great plan Yes, it's not scary at all, I'm just here A mummy face and I will disappear and reappear Yeah, that's poor editing But I was 10 years old, what you think of this? It's my fucking dream. I was baby starring on the big screen and I'm a maniac and I'm not taking it back. But son, um, we're all gonna die. Deal with that. Ladies and gentlemen, can we please give it up for The Freeze! Oh my God. All the way over there, rocking percussion. Sanjay, put it on me, Bardanani! Rocking the bass and the vocals, Olive, Junkyard, Mitra! Representing the females on the crew and the vocals, Lauren Elward Nagel! Hip-hop lyrical skills, Brendan Opie Hill. Now guys, I just wanna let you know, if you're looking for like a band for your bar mitzvah, 
They're available. Uh, great. Uh, at the end of every Mortified, we have a tradition. We like to review all the lessons that we've learned, right? We've learned some important lessons. What have we learned today? Uh, obviously, we learned never to settle for anyone that doesn't eat cheese, right? Yes, thank you. Uh, we learned, thank you. We learned the way to a man's heart is to call him a wood nymph. We discovered that sometimes love only lasts as long as one song. We learned that if you really loved your kids, you would never have them. All right, a few quick announcements we wanted to make. Uh, if you enjoyed Mortified, it is uh, actually available via podcast anywhere in the world. You can see it's called the Mortified Podcast. Very easy to remember. You can share these weird boner stories with your relatives in the middle of the country that aren't blessed to be in a Mortified city. Uh, we do a show every month every second Friday in San Francisco, every second Saturday in Oakland. So go to getmortified.com to check out any of our regular shows. The freeze is always there. Uh, and again, like I said, this is our 13 year anniversary, so the celebration continues. Next week, we are doing our 13 year anniversary show Thursday in San Francisco at the Great Northern, Saturday in Oakland at the New Parish. We're gonna do the best new pieces of 2018 which includes someone that was coming out of the closet and getting obsessed with Jesus as his first sexual attraction. Uh, and there's a sex fantasy about that. Other things, but I just wanted to tease you guys with that one. Uh, a few other things I want to mention about uh, the JCC. They have a few other events coming up. I think on April 4th, they have Rob Reich, political thinker. And then on, uh, I believe it's, oh, I'm sorry, February 7th. On April 4th, they've got the Portland Cello Project doing a full uh, a cover of Radiohead's album, OK Computer. Be a cello. That's crazy. So go to the JCCSF site for that. Go to getmortified.com for all info on how to see the shows, how to share your own stuff on stage. You've got your own strange diaries, your own poetry. Uh, if you want to check out more about The Freeze, go to thefreezesf.com. There they are. Aren't they adorable? So check them out online. They do holiday parties, right? They can be soundtracks for your everyday life. Uh, one more big round of applause. Thank the JCC for having us so much. For letting us have our, thank you guys for sharing in our bar bot mitzvah. We feel like we've all grown a little bit. Thank you to Ari working the decks up at the control booth. The freeze is gonna take us out now. Have a fantastic evening. Have a happy Hanukkah. Have a great new year. Thank you. One, two, three, yes, cause we're gonna party all night long. All night long. Yes, we're gonna party all night. Because we're still super old and it's bedtime. Thank you, JCC.